we're going to talk about some things which you need to pay particular attention to it, what we are going to talk about today. Talk, talk about four callings in Christ. Four. And we want to look, find ourselves which of the callings are we? When you look at churches, churches that have so many members, maybe millions of people are worshiping there. And look at the church when maybe the people there are not up, up to 10. What is that? Why is it that when you are reading the poor epistles, there are some of the churches in the homes. There are very few, only the household. Few, they have it in their homes. And they are play, uh, some of them also, they meet in the place. In Jerusalem, when the church was starting, they, there was one they meet in the temple. They were meeting in the temple. They met in the temple. That was why in the Arch of the Tree, when Peter and John were going to the temple to pray, to join them that they encountered that cripple who Peter spoke and the guy got up. Then you find out that in Acts chapter 4, when they had encountered problem with the Jewish people, Jewish Sahelian the authorities, they came to the, they called their company and they prayed. So that place was not in the temple. Again, when Peter, Acts the 12, encountered problems, when they arrested him and want, Herod wanted to kill him, as he killed James, the brother of John, not the brother of Jesus. There were two James, two apostles were called James. The brother of John, the son of Zebedee, who told Jesus in Luke chapter 9, from verse 51, he and his brother John told Jesus, let them call fire and burn this fellow, see, in Samaritan villages. Then Jesus rebuked them. You don't know the spirit you are making up of, which is not some contentions. People said, oh, now people should not judge like Elijah did. So we are going to look at the callings so you understand why all these things are happening in the Bible. In that Acts chapter 12, the church were grouping in John Mark's house, John Mark mother's house. John Mark is the same one who wrote the gospel according to Mark. The house to, they have a church there. So we're going to look at the sons of God, the calling as sons of God, the children of God, then servants and slaves in Christ. Somebody will say, ah, so you think they are slaves in Christ? Yes, we call them born, born men. We're going to look at them. Then you said, ah, you see, they are servants, because it's written in the book of Galatians, that we are all sons. And as sons, we are not servants. Why are you saying that they are servants in Christ? Then they say that you are not children. You are not children because children are tossed here and there by every gospel. So you are not children. Why are you saying that you are children of God in Christ? Because what Jesus is trying to say, he said, as many as receive him, he gave him, gave them the power to become sons of God. Why are you mentioning children? You mentioned servants here. So we're going to look, find out. There's a church, two churches, the church of, that was formed in Galatia and the church that was formed in Philippi. They were only sons of God in that church. You read through the epistle, you'll find out that there were no other people apart from sons of God alone in those two churches. And Paul charged them. And he was trying to remove every doctrine away from them. Because these are sons of God. He told them, Galatians, you are all sons of God. Because all of you are wearing Christ. In Philippi, he called them brethren. Chapter 1, that, Philipp that Philippian letter. That word brethren is the same Greek word which was used in Hebrew chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, when Jesus called, said, you are sons of God like me, I've sanctified you to be like me, so I call you brethren. I'm not ashamed to call you brethren. Then he told these Philippians, let the mind of Christ be in you, the same mind of Christ. 
bring down everything under the feet of Christ. Cause people to recognize Christ as the Lord so they will, to the glory of the Father. Work out your salvation with that fear and trembling. for God is working in you so that you not be blamed as sons of God in this crook world which will shine as light. The Philippians said to you, are telling them in these Philippians. So in those churches, Paul was particularly careful about the words he speak. Why? Because they are sons of God. So that, those churches, you are not expecting crowd in that church. You are not expecting the church to have full membership. No. The church, that's a church, the members there are few, maybe 10 or even less. Why? Because it's the church comprising only the sons of God. Now, you look at a church like Corinth, the church in Corinth and in Ephesus. If you look at the two epistles that were written to Corinthians, you find that a whole lot of things are stated there. They were servants, they were slaves. These servants and slaves, I'm not talking about servants and slaves of human beings. Well, Paul says something in Ephesus. Uh, where is that? Ephesus chapter, the book of Ephesians. He says something in chapter, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 5. Ephesians chapter 6. He says something like, Paul was speaking that, that Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. Let me look at the verse here for you. He said, verse 6 to 9, Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 6 to 9. You the word servants. Be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh. So these are these servants here. The Greek word dolos is slaves. I mentioned flesh. So these were the slaves in the Roman Empire. Those days. Those days were Roman kingdom. So there were slaves there, and they, some of them became, and their masters came to the church. So in that efficient church, a whole lot of people were inside, just like the current church. But not in Galatia and Philippi. You will not share those things there. He didn't mention them here. Corinthians chapter, uh, first Corinthians chapter 7, he was talking about servants. Then calling people circumcised and uncircumcised. These are all children. The circumcised children are children. And the difference between the children and the servants are not so much. The, ch the children and the servants are almost the same. You see what Paul was saying to the Galatians, Galatians chapter 4, that they are his, but if they behave as children, they will not be different as servants. Because we, we were children like everybody. But when the fullness of time came, Christ, God, Christ came. God sent forth his son, made of a woman, born under the Lord, to redeem you. So you receive the adoption to be sons. So he was very serious with them. He said, how that you, you are no more servants. You are sons and heirs of God through Christ. How that you are going back to serve these kind of bondages and elements of this world and want to keep yourself in bondage. You are keeping days like Sabbath days, Holy Moon, First Moon, the kind of things. You see, you see, these are children. Servants, this thing. And he said, you, who want to be under the law? Don't you hear what the law said? That there are two sons in Abraham and one is under bondage. He's a born. He's a slave. He's like a slave. Under the things of Mount Sinai. He was saying all these things to Galatian church. Why? Because the Galatian church are for sons of God alone. Then the slaves of Christ were mostly the apostles. They're supposed to be the apostles. The slaves of Christ were the apostles. Apostle Peter described himself in, in first, Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1 is 2. This is what Peter said. He said, Simon Peter a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. That word servant here is dolos, his slave. 
So he can call himself as a slave. No, the slave have no option. They can't separate themselves from Christ because a slave is bonded. It's not a servant. A servant can decide whether to serve or not because they serve for wages and salaries. So when they are serving God, they want, they are, these, are the people, these are the people that you tell them to bring something to God so God will bless you and they will follow. Because they serve for wages and salaries. They can quit anytime because they, they, they are services or the reason why they are attracted to what they are doing is because of the wages, what they are going to get. So for them, they are not bonded like the slaves. So Peter said this, and that, that is Second Peter chapter 1 verse 1, but Peter said this again in First Peter chapter 2 verse 18 to 19 and 21. This is what he said. He said, servants, he used the same word, servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to be good and gentle, but also to be forward. For this is thank word to if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully, for even here unto where we call, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. That servants he used there is ordinary servants, it's not slave. The word he used there is, is a Greek word called orchetis. Orchetis. Orchetis means a resident service, service man, manual, domestic, or household servants. It's not a slave. So you are talking to people who were maybe taking us, maybe meat and then in the people's homes who were working for salaries, or today we call them laborers. Somebody may go to school and he's a professor, but he's a, he's a servant. Public servants, maybe a private company. Somebody has opened the company and given it to him to work for him. And the person will be sleeping somewhere. And he said, I'm well educated. But because the mind doesn't know that he's a servant, he think it's very good because he's earning some money. And maybe if somebody leaves or somebody leaves his company for you and you manage it well, you are not stealing. Well, if you are not stealing, it's very difficult to be a multi there because the salary he's given to you is the person's expenses. And if your salary, your wage is my expenses, how can you be <laughs> a millionaire like me? Because what I'm spending on you is my expenses. So some of people who are intelligent, like in Luke chapter 16, they try to steal the master. So that's why I have to control when you are having businesses. And you can, for example, open a business when you are maybe in Europe and you live in Africa. Because the people know, they know that this, what you are giving to them is not enough to make them what they want. So they will steal. So he was talking about ordinary servants. Then we look at the children. Children are confused by every doctrine. Ephesians, Jesus, uh, Paul was teaching them, chapter 4, from verse 11 to 14, that oh, we want to perfect you, bring you the first teacher of Christ, so you all come to this unity of faith. You all come to the unity of faith, whether you are a child or servant or a slave or a son of God, because that Ephesian church, everyone is there. You come to unity of faith, so you no more be children tossed here and there by every doctrine. Now, look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, and then 21 to 22 or 23. Jesus said they should beware of false prophets. By their fruit, you know them. He said, they came, they will come to him. And he said, not everybody who men should call me Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Some will come to me in the last day and say, Lord, we do what? We prophesy in your name. We do, Lord, of, we cast our devils in your name. We do a lot of great things in your name. And he told them that I don't know you. It, was it evil? Was it evil? What these people were doing? Were they evil? Not somebody who is delivering somebody. 
it's, 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 it loves the person, isn't it? If I'm prophesying, and prophesying here, maybe to give you comfort or tell you what Satan wants to do so that you can protect yourself. And he prays for you to deliver you, even cast devils away from your, the person's life and work miracles for people. Why should Jesus say they are workers of iniquity? Why? Who can tell me why? Why should they be workers of iniquity? Yes, maybe personal distance. But specifically, these people Jesus was addressing were, were supposed to teach the sons of God. The sons of God, if you try to preach miracles, prophecies, I'm a prophet. Or you are preaching deliverances, call people, and sons of God. If you are doing that to them, that preacher will be destroyed. Because you are taming their mind. You are making them to look as if they are children or servants. But they are not. These are he- sons of God are here. We- they are seated together with Christ. They are joined here with him. These are judges who are bringing justice of God here on earth. Jesus said, when we pray, say, our father. That is to the sons. You may become be a child of God too. To the sons. Our father, let your way be done here on earth. That is the justice, the judgment and justice of God. Because for God's way to be done here on earth, some wicked creatures must be punished. They must be tamed. Or removed or cast away. That Jesus said, you cast them away. And, and I like Luke chapter 10, verse 17. The 70 came to Jesus and said, the devils, they are subject to us. They didn't say they are subject to God. They are subject to us in your name. That's what they said. These are the sons of God. The word from their mouth is very dangerous. It's fire, it's sore. It brings judgment and justice. That is why when somebody is teaching you that it is not God who was bringing fire and killing people in the Old Testament, if you are saying that to the Son of God, you are deceiving him because what was happening in the Old Testament was by Jesus himself. He was the Son. He punishes. The Lord, in fact, well, first time we watched the two, I think verse 7 or verse 6, he said, the Lord kills and he gives life. He makes people poor and makes them rich. That is the son of God. That is his work. He's a judge. He brings justice of God. Because, you see, God creatures are not all good. That is why, at the end, God himself will burn some of them in the lake of fire. He created them. Whether angels or human beings or whatever, he created them. But he calls some devils. And these devils are the cause of problems of the creations of God, whether they are in heaven or on earth. They are doing that. So the answer for God's justice is the sons of God. So if you are, you are not teaching them maturity and you are just praying with them, God will destroy you. You see, in, in, in Matthew chapter 24, from verse 24 to 26, Jesus said, There shall be false prophets and false Christ, which shall do so many great signs and wonders that if even it is possible, they will deceive the very elect. Behold, I've told you, when they tell you that it's here, don't go there. He was talking then that time to the apostles. But the time he was talking, he knew that these people would not be there at that time. All of them would be dead. Because I'm talking about what is happening last days. I mean, they asked him what is going to happen when, when you're about to come. So he was talking to people in the days to come. Days to come. That you can't deceive them. But watch here. First Corinthians chapter 1. I think some down the, one of the verses. First Corinthians chapter 1. If you look down, let me see if I can see the verse there for you. Paul was talking about the Jews, that these Jews, they, they, they only believe in God through miracles. If you don't show them a sign, you can forget. He said the Jews deserve a sign. What is it? First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 1, the verse 22. For the Jews require a sign. If you are not showing them a sign, you remember in John chapter 6, 
they were following Jesus because giving food. He commanding food. Jesus was conjuring food for them. And they were following him. Then Jesus told them that, I am the bread of life. Eat me rather. Not the food of miracles I'm commanding. They got offended. All of them left. Remain only the 12 apostles. John chapter 6 from verse, I think, 60 or 66 going. All of them left. Remain the 12 apostles. And they asked he asked them, do you also want to go? He knew that they can't go, but can continue. They were slaves. He slaves. He slaves, you have no option. Peter said, we don't have anywhere to go. He said, but it's me who appointed the 12 of you. Now who make you my slaves? But one is a devil. And he's talking about Judas Carlos, who to betray him. So he even make a devil his slave for assignments. And when you're reading John chapter 13, when the time came, he told him, what you are going to do, go and do it quick. He said to Judas Iscariot. Now here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, that verse 22, the Jews require a sign, which means they are babies, they are children. The Israelites, the things that were taught to them were for children. It's not for sons of God. So if any person is teaching sons of God, anything from Genesis to Malachi, that person will be destroyed. You see, you don't, people should wait and understand God before they speak things they speak today. You see, Jesus talked about the scribes and Pharisees that they are broken people from entering into the kingdom of God. They themselves are not entering, but they don't want people to enter. And they compass everywhere, think they are building churches everywhere. But people, they are calling souls, they are still to the kingdom of God. They are making them two full children of hell than themselves. Matthew 23, 13 to 15. And that is very dangerous. These people were preaching about God. They were holding the Bible, Genesis to Malachi, and used to preach. But look at their end. It's a woe unto you. Now, look at something what Jesus said and looked at a 16 from verse 8 and 9. He called children, that were children that he was, if you are reading King James, sons of this world and sons of God. He called them sons of light. We are talking about wealth, material wealth. He used the word unrighteous mammon. That's the material wealth of this world. And he's talking about that the sons of God should make friends of this material wealth so that they can grab it and get habitation around them. And he was telling them that when it comes to making material wealth, the sons of this world are wiser. You know how to get it, but not the sons of God. Now, what, what is he trying to say? You see, as sons of God, your word to speak can bring judgment everywhere. But to get material wealth is another thing altogether. When God is working in you as the son of God, he does work. Everything you speak, he does it. It's the father who is working. The thing you speak and happen is the father who is working. But what the father has already given to you, when you speak it, he will not come to you like that. Because you're already given, isn't it? This is material wealth. Jesus is saying that the sons of this world, that's the daughters and sons of this world, or this darkness world, they are wiser in getting them. Who give it to them? They use their own wisdom to get it. It's not about God. God how will God give it to them and you will not give it to you? So when you declare that some wealth is for Satan, fine. Then Satan will take it. But when somebody is teaching you, or the son of God, somebody is teaching you that God said, give you money. So he'll give you money. That is foolishness. Eh? Because this is for, maybe, slaves will not even do that. Because if somebody is a servant or a slave, since he's serving, the, the, the slave master or the master will give him something. Since he's serving, he doesn't need to ask. Since he's serving, he will, because Jesus said, servants deserve their food. God knows that. So you don't have to go and buy something from God. Because when you are doing something from God, automatically it will come. But it is not so with the sons of God. Because the sons of God are already heirs of God. 
That is why in the story in Luke chapter 15 about prodigal son, the father told the elder son, but you are here with me all the time. Do, do I have to tell you to kill a kid, a, a goat, <laughs> they are all for you. So the sons must understand how to get things themselves. Not just praying, take, <laughs> because this guy Jesus, he needed money. He told Peter, take your hook, go to the sea, cast the hook in the sea. The money you, the fish you draw, open the mouth. That's a lesson. The sea is the world. The hook is something like investment. Maybe one euro you are putting into something. Then you draw it. So the sons of God should not sleep in their room and say we are praying for money to drop. No. You have to do something. That was what you were teaching in Luke chapter 16. So as church who are for sons of God, but we don't expect crowd. And when people go out and say, we are going to win souls for Christ, everybody should come in. It depends on the kind of church they are building. Other than that, you will not do that. When people come into the church, which is many sons of God, they will receive whatever they need. Because that sons of God here, anything they pray for them will happen. Anything. That's why I'll give you the examples of when I started, I give you examples of people who are come here and receive everything they want. Whether they want babies, they want papers, they want a job, they want everything, everything, or they want healing. You just speak to them. Just bring them to your front. Speak to the person. You'll get it. But you have to also be doing the same thing to yourselves, too. But you know, but the Son of God don't look at those things. The Son of God look at the big picture. How to destroy the demonic forces. Operating maybe in the realms of Europe, in the realms of Africa, in the realms of maybe China, in the realms of South America. This is what the Son of God is thinking. Because he's bringing the word of God here on earth. But if you don't take time, you will not take care of yourself. You will not be thinking about the wealth you need. And you see, it is high time that we stop serving human beings because we are not servants. We are not servants of God, not to talk about servants of human beings. This knowledge alone should break that bondage from our lives. So I pray that we understand this. So when you are reading the Bible and maybe you come about slaves, come about servants, when somebody is reading something from Genesis and want you to copy it, or somebody is coming something, you can understand where the person is coming from, what he meant, and whether it's for sons of God, or maybe he's teaching children and servants, or he's a slave. Things. May God bless you. We stand on our feet.